Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our news watch unit for the month of November, and we've got a couple of interesting feature stories to talk about today. One is about perfume, and the other one is about video games. And I don't really use either one of these things. I'm a guy. We don't put on perfume. I guess we use cologne, but even then, we don't use it that much. And video games, I've always thought they're a waste of time, but I guess they can be quite therapeutic, as we're going to find. Find out today. Yeah, well, this type of perfume, Tom, isn't a, a perfume that you actually want to wear.、Um, it's kind of interesting. The astronauts that go out into space actually have an opportunity to experience a scent that the rest of us on Earth never do get to experience, and that's what space smells like. And then the video game. I'm with Tom. I don't really play video games, but this video game is supposed to really help as a therapy, a treatment,、um, especially for some kids. So we'll talk about that first. Though we're going to read through both stories. Oh, to space! A perfume that's out of this world. It's impossible to smell outer space. Or is it? While nobody is suggesting astronauts would actually crack open their spacesuits to get a whiff of the vacuum of space, some astronauts have mentioned a scent on their suits after returning from spacewalks. The U.S.'s National Aeronautics and Space Administration asked a chemist to recreate the smell in 2008. They wanted to make astronaut training as realistic as possible, in order to reduce the number of surprises for astronauts. After all, in space, reacting badly to a surprise or emergency could be fatal. So, what does space smell like? Some common scents described by astronauts are nuts, gunpowder, and burning metal. Peggy Whitson, an astronaut who lived on the International Space Station, summarized it as a bitter kind of smell, in addition to being smoky and burned. An enterprising company started raising funds in June 2020 to sell the scent as a perfume, which they're calling Eau de Space. If you want to smell like outer space, seek out Eau de Space for yourself. U.S. FDA takes a surprising position on a video game. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration (FDA) has done something surprising and exciting. In June 2020, the U.S. government agency approved a video game to be marketed as therapy. Although researchers have studied the potential for games to help people learn vital skills or recover from injuries. This is the first game to be allowed by the FDA to call itself therapeutic. The game, developed by Akili Interactive, is called Endeavor RX, and it's designed to help children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder (ADHD). ADHD is a disorder that interferes with a person's ability to control and maintain focus. Current treatments include medicine and help from therapists. Endeavor RX is intended to help children train themselves to increase the amount of time they can keep focused on a task, even if they have multiple distractions. Akili Interactive conducted several studies involving more than 600 children between 8 and 12 years old. Though independent studies must also be carried out. There is room for cautious optimism about this development in the field of digital therapy. Okay, guys, O to space.、Uh, when you see this word E A U, you know it's French. 
It just means scent. So scent of something, a scent of space. Ooh hoo, a perfume.、Uh, for the ladies out there, especially if you ever go to the cosmetics counter、um, and are looking at perfume, many of the perfume bottles will have that word E A U uh, O. Uh, so in French, it's a、uh, scent or perfume. So if you want to smell like space. Uh, here's your chance. They're actually working on this particular scent, and、uh, plan to sell it as a perfume.、Um, it's not really my kind of scent, but I'm sure somebody out there will want to buy it, right, Tom? <laughs>、uh, possibly. Like I said, I don't really use perfume myself.、Uh, I have in the past. When I thought the clothes that I was going to wear for the day、uh, kind of smelled because of mold or something like that, then I would spray perfume in the air and then I'd walk through that perfume. Not not cologne, because women wear perfume, but guys we say cologne. Uh, that's true, but I've never purchased any cologne in、really? my life. Wow! The only kind of stuff we have at my house is perfume、wow. that my wife sometimes wears,、mm -hmm. and so that was the only thing I had a couple of times <laughs> when my clothes didn't smell so good. So I actually used perfume, but、uh, yeah, for the most part, I would not wear perfume. But yeah, eau de space, a perfume that's out of this world. Yeah, they use that word eau a lot when they describe perfume、uh, from France. Or eau de cologne, or de eau de toilette, or something like toilette. that. Toilette, and、yeah. uh, it's impossible to smell outer space. Okay, so we're talking about、uh, a perfume from space here, but you can't really smell outer space. Or is it possible to smell outer space? Well, that's a question. Maybe some of you can answer for us.、Hmm. While nobody is suggesting astronauts would actually crack open their spacesuits to get a whiff of the vacuum of space, some astronauts have mentioned a scent on their suits after returning from spacewalks. So yeah, you just can't go out into the vacuum of space and try to take a breath of air. There's no air out there.、Uh, if you do expose your face. To、uh, outer space, I think you can survive for a little while, but probably not too long. It's a very dangerous thing to do. So yeah, we're not suggesting that astronauts actually do that.、Uh, no one is suggesting. No one is making this suggestion or trying to tell us that that's that's what they should do. An astronaut, of course, is a person who、uh, works and lives in space. There,、uh, we've got astronauts, and if they're from Russia, they're cosmonauts, and if they're from China, they're taikonauts. But、uh, we say astronauts, and yet you don't want to crack open your spacesuit. So we've got this、uh, phrase here to crack open, which means to open something, and then it will have this crack sound as it opens. Crack open a nut.、Uh, when you are opening a shell of a nut, that's really hard. We'll often say they're going.、Uh, we're cracking open the shell, cracking open the nut. So they crack open their spacesuits. You definitely don't want to do that. I think those spacesuits、uh, are protecting their bodies. It also、um, the suit includes the oxygen that they need to breathe. You know that in space there is no oxygen for them to breathe. So if you crack open your spacesuit, you likely would die. Now, whiff is another word we use when we're talking about smelling something. Or a particular scent or odor. Odor is more negative. It's a bad smell.、Uh, coming into the the room. Ooh, I got a whiff of your feet. Oh, your feet are smelly. Yeah,、uh, boys when they take off their tennis shoes often have really smelly feet. And my brother would take off his shoes after school. We'd be watching TV, and suddenly my mom would go, "Ah,、oh, Steve." Put your shoes and your socks and outside and go wash your feet. You get a whiff of that. It's pretty bad. Yeah, that reminds me of my first、uh, roommate in college <laughs>、uh, when he took his socks off. The,、uh, the room just reeked. I got a whiff of his、uh, smelly <laughs> feet here. But yeah, we're not suggesting that astronauts crack open their spacesuits to get a <laughs> whiff of the vacuum of space.、Mm. But、uh, some astronauts have mentioned a scent on their suits, a smell on their suits after returning from spacewalks, say outside the International Space Station or wherever. We've also got. The word vacuum here.、Uh, that's what you do to your carpet. Maybe once a week you vacuum the carpet.
but vacuum technically refers to an area that has no air. There's nothing there. So yes, the vacuum of space refers to space because there's no air out there. So yeah, if you、uh, opened up your spacesuit, you would probably suffocate pretty quickly because there's no air out there. It's a vacuum. And、uh, however, though, after they go out and、uh, do stuff in space, they return to the spaceship.、Uh, they close the airlock and they re they repressurize the cabin, and then they remove their spacesuits. And then they have this smell. Oh, I can smell something. It seems like uh, uh, the smell from space outside kind of stuck to our spacesuits here. Yeah, I'm sure that that's、uh, what goes on. So we've got NASA. Um, NASA is the U.S.'s、uh, Aeronautics and Space Administration.、Um, this is the full name, guys: National Aeronautics and Space Administration. But most people just refer to this group as NASA.、Um, you can see that NASA, the acronym in parentheses. They asked a chemist to recreate the smell in 2008. Now let's look at this word administration. It's one of our vocab words. It's just、um, uh, you know a group. It could be an organization, or it could also refer to the process or activity of running a business. Some people major in business administration in college.、Um, that's、uh, just a major that teaches you how to run a business, especially those who.、Um, Are asked to do jobs at, at, at an executive level where they're managing a business. So administration. And here's this word chemist. A chemist is somebody who has been trained in chemistry or mixing chemicals together. Yep, that's what a chemist does, and they tried to recreate the smell back in 2008, and they wanted to make astronaut training as realistic as possible in order to reduce the number of surprises for astronauts. So they thought, yes, we need to recreate the smell so that astronauts are used to it. And so, when they're actually in space, there won't be any surprises. After all, in space, reacting badly to a surprise or emergency could be fatal, and、mm -hmm. fatal means it causes death. Hopefully, none of us will be in fatal car accidents in our lives. So, what does space smell like? Big question. I'd like to know. Well, some common scents or smells described by astronauts are these things. Oh, it kind of smells like nuts. Maybe some gunpowder, burning metal. Here is an astronaut. Her name is Peggy Whitson, and she lived on the International Space Station for a while. She summarized the smell as, and this is her quote: "A bitter kind of smell, in addition to being smoky and burned." Doesn't smell very tempting. Now, an enterprising company started raising funds in June 2020 to produce this scent as a perfume that people could actually buy and wear. If someone describes you as being enterprising, they just mean, "Oh, you're you've got a lot of initiative. You're you know you've got a lot of、uh, get up and go inside you. You don't wait for people to tell you what to do. You have ideas that you want to try out." So the company started raising funds or money in June 2020. They wanted to raise some money so they could produce this smell and start selling it. And they wanted to call it "Eau de Space," which is hilarious. So, if you want to smell like outer space yourself, well, seek out eau de space for yourself. And who knows if you wear this perfume and you smell like space, you might attract、uh, intelligent people. They might think, "Hey, you know, if you have that kind of smell on you, that means you like science. I like you. Let's get together. Let's get married and live happily ever after." Who knows? It may attract the opposite sex. Okay, you might also attract aliens. Think、uh, about、true. that. Watch out for them. I guess they say that aliens <laughs> are real now, but that's a subject for another day.、Uh, we'll return in just a couple of seconds, and we'll talk about a new video game out there that the FDA seems to approve of. 听众朋友，大家好，欢迎收听今天的 English Digest。我们今天要看两篇新闻。第一篇新闻是有关于太空味的特制香水。
不过，我们真的能够闻到太空的味道吗？虽然呐、啊，没有人说太空人会真的去打开太空装闻太空的香气，但是很多太空人呢、啊，他们从太空漫步回来之后，就会提到身上有一种味道。那么这句话出现在第一段的第二句当中，我们要特别注意第一个单字叫做。While while 在英文当中，当然它可以有表示时间 when 的意思，可是它还有另外一个功能，就可以表示让步，也就是 although 虽然的意思。那么在这句话当中，因为前后的子句，它表现出来是一种让步，虽然没有人 suggest 暗示或者是说太空人真的会打开他的衣服去闻味道，但是。真的有这样子的一个 scent， 有一个气味出现。不过在这句话当中，还有一个很特别的地方 ，astronaut 这个叫做太空人，跟我们所谓的占星学家 astrologer a s t r o l o g e r astrologer 这两个字。不要搞混哦。不过，在2008年 ，NASA 要求一名化学家重现这种气味，因为他们希望让太空人的训练尽量的切合实际。这个切合实际，在英文当中，我们看到同样第一段第四句的地方 ，as realistic as possible。As as possible 是尽可能的，如何如何。像我们最常听到的是 as soon as possible， 尽快的，如何如何。好，那么为什么一定要模仿这个气味呢？因为在太空当中，如果对意外或紧急情况做出不良的反应，可能非常的致命 ，fatal。在第一段最后一句最后一个字的 fatal。F A T A L， 致命或者是非常严重，所以如果犯了很严重的错误，可以说 make a fatal mistake。好，那么到底太空的味道像是什么呢？可能是像坚果啦、火药啦，或者是燃烧的金属。在第二段第二句当中，我们看到 some common sense， 后面接着 described， 这个地方可以左挂号，因为它是一个关系子句的简化。那么右挂号挂在后面第三个字 astronaut 中间 that are 关系词还有 be 动词省略掉了。而住在太空站的一个太空人 Peggy Whitson， 他还说，除了一种烟雾烧焦的味道，还有一种苦味。而有一家有创新精神的公司，从二零二零年六月就开始募资资金来售出这种味道的香水。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, that's nice, huh? I bet our listeners are happy.、Uh, it can be marketed or used as therapy, some sort of treatment for whatever condition or disease someone's、uh, fighting or、uh, trying to work through. Although researchers have studied the potential for games to help people learn vital skills or essential skills, or even recover from injuries, this is the first game to be allowed by the FDA. To call itself therapeutic, if something describes itself as being therapeutic, it just means it can be used to try to heal some sort of disease or condition. 
So that's a big deal. Now, if something or someone has potential, it just means they show that they have some sort of capacity to develop into something in the future. If your teacher says, "Oh, you have a lot of potential, young man," um, it just means your teacher sees you as someone who will develop into a successful ad- an adult and a su- uh, who will develop into a successful adult in the future, and that's a compliment. So it's great when people say you have potential. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, right.、Uh, if you're young and you're like five years old and、uh, you sing a song really clearly,、uh, your parents might say, "Hey, you've got potential to be a professional musician in the future. We better start taking lessons right now." So yeah, they're studying the potential or the future possibility of games being able to help people learn vital skills. Or to recover from injuries, and this is the first game to be allowed by the FDA to call itself therapeutic. So it could actually help people out there. And the game, developed by Akili Interactive, I guess that's the name of some sort of game company. It's called. Endeavor RX.、Uh, look it up. There are probably、uh, videos on the internet about this game, and it's designed to help children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD for short. You probably heard of that before.、Uh, disorder is just some kind of、uh, problem that you might have、uh, in your mind or with your body or something like that. There are various、uh, diseases that have this、uh, this name of. Something disorder or disease or syndrome or something—they're all words we use to describe、uh, problems that people have. That's right. So ADHD is a disorder that interferes with a person's ability to control and maintain focus. So it's really hard for people with this particular disorder. To focus in on something, I have someone in my family that has this. Now, if If you use this verb phrase "interfere with," it just means something is preventing something from continu- being continued or even being carried out. Maybe you're trying to study, and、uh, your roommate has、uh, their music up really loud. Wow, it's interfering with your ability to study for a test. So this disorder interferes with a person's、um, ability to even focus on something. Current treatments include medicine. You could take a pill, or sometimes、uh, people with ADHD go and talk to a therapist、uh, who can help them as well. So Endeavor RX is the name of the video game. It helps children train themselves to increase the amount of time they can keep focused on a task. So instead of maybe being able to focus for two minutes, they keep trying to increase that time so that they can focus for longer amounts of time, so that they、um, are more successful in life, even if they have multiple distractions. So the video game helps them focus, but it also gives them these distractions that they have to overcome. Gee, I'd like to try this myself. I know I have difficulty focusing on things、mm-hmm. sometimes. I think all of us do. People with ADHD probably have a really bad time focusing on things, but、uh, this is designed to help them keep focused on something, even with lots of distractions. We've got lots of distractions in our lives when we're trying to do something. The phone rings. We hear a message coming in on our phone. Our Kids are yelling at us. The dog is barking. The birds are chirping. There's an earthquake. There's a flood outside. There's news reports on TV <laughs> about the election being、uh, being a fraud or something like that. So yes, those are all distractions. And here, the company Akili Interactive conducted several studies involving more than 600 children between eight and 12 years old. So yeah, they did some research here involving lots of kids, 600 of them between the ages of eight. And twelve, and though independent studies must also be carried out, there is room for cautious optimism about this development in the field of digital therapy. So yeah, they did their own research, but we need some independent research or independent studies to confirm their findings. But still, there is room. We can consider having some cautious. Optimism. Optimism just means we're feeling、uh, good about something that's going to happen in the future, but we're cautious. We're careful. We don't want to get too excited. Yeah.、Um, a lot of times, if a company does its own research, 
、uh, you can't trust it like you can if the research comes from an independent group. A group that isn't being paid by the company to do the research is even better. So, yeah, there's room for cautious optimism. You'll often see those two words together. Or, I'm cautiously optimistic. You'll hear people say, "You want to be optimistic, hopeful, but you're not quite sure if things are going to work out, so you're cautious about it. You're not going to just, you know, jump into it and say, 'Oh yeah, it's going to be great.' You're going to wait for some." Evidence for some proof, but we hope this、uh, works out for a lot of these kids with ADHD. Now, guys, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to wrap it up. 接下来我们看到这篇新闻是有关于电玩对于一种过动症的新疗法。最近 FDA 做出了让人很惊讶并且很振奋的事情，因为在二零二零年六月，美国政府机构批准了一款。电玩作为疗法来行销。那么我们在第一段的第二句最后一个字看到 therapy, t h e r a p y. Therapy 这个字会贯穿整个文章，因为后面呢，我们看到的是研究人员研究了游戏，通常是帮助大家可以学习重要技能或者从伤害当中恢复潜力。但是这个游戏是第一个。FDA 允许称为有治疗性的游戏，所以在接下来的第三句当中的最后一个字 therapeutic 这个形容词，就是刚才我们说 therapy 治疗法的形容词。而这个游戏是由 Achilles Internet 这个公司开发，那它被设计是来帮助患有注意力不足过动症，也就是我们常说的 ADHD。的这些孩童，那么 ADHD 到底是什么样的一种疾病呢？这种疾病啊，其实是一种失调、失序。所以，其实，在第一段的最后一个字当中，就有点出 disorder， D I S O R D E R。那么，第二段的第一句也针对这个 disorder 这样子的疾病来做深入的解释。在第二段第一句当中， disorder 后面的 that。一直到句尾的地方是关系子句，说明 ADHD 是一种会干扰一个人控制、保持专注的能力的这种疾病。那么，当然目前有一些疗法，包括 medicine 药物，或者是治疗师。治疗师在第二段第二句最后一个 therapist，therapist therapist, 也就是我们刚刚提到的疗法 therapy， 具有疗法的 therapeutic。还有治疗师 therapist， 不过这款电玩呢，其实是要帮助孩童训练自己，让他们能够专注于一项任务的时间拉长。所以我们在第二段第三句当中也看到了一个关系子句，先行词是 the amount of time。关系子句从后面的 that 一直到逗点这个地方，不过冠带 that。或者是 which 省略掉了，即使他们有很多分心的东西，但是还是希望能够借由这样子游戏来增加他们专注的时间。不过还是需要很多独立的研究，所以这样子的数位新疗法，我们现在还是要保持一种很审慎乐观的态度。我们要注意到。第二段最后面这句当中的 cautious optimism， 它特别在英文当中指的是谨慎乐观的态度。这就是我们今天的 News Watch 有关于太空位的特制香水，还有过动症的新疗法，某一款新的电玩哦。以上是我们的今天的课程。That's it for today. Hopefully, our news stories were of interest to you today. Uh, about the video game and about the space perfume. Gee, I'd like to try them both. <laughs> It、uh, does sound interesting. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.